Hi, so we'll continue to talk about the temporal loop examination. We we'll try to use the same structured approach that we uh, talk about in frontal loop examination. So as we agreed, we have a general items we should follow in every loop examination. Name and age, right or left handed, orientation to person and place and time. And we add an inspection for a skin stigmata or, or surgical uh, scars operation. And we can add for the frontal loop, temporal loop is just a small thing, which is not in part of the examination, but just to, to remind you that you put in your mind the seizures with aura or deja vu sensation. So what's really the, the items? As we agreed, we use the patient face to remember the items and we're trying to make them five items in each loop so we can make the same structured approach. So for the forehead, you can remember the memory. You're asking him about short-term memory and long-term memory. For short-term memory, you give him an address and you ask him, you re recall it after the, the examination. So for example, 30 Liverpool Street in London. I'll ask you about this address at the end of my examination. And then we talk about long-term memory. We can ask him questions like, who's the current prime minister? Moving to the next one, which is the visual field. In the visual field, in the temporal loop defect, the visual field usually superior quadrinopia. We talk about it in the contralateral superior quadrinopia, and we'll talk about it more, a little bit more at the end of this video. So you can examine the visual field using confrontation methods. Hearing and smell. So the nose and ears, you can see the nose, hearing and smell. Hearing, because Heschel, Heschel gyrus is in the temporal loop, is responsible for auditory function. So we're rubbing the fingers just beside the ear and comparing to the other side and see if there is any change between them. And for the smell, although the smell is related to the frontal loop, but in the seizure related to the um, temporal loop, we can see there is some olfactory aura or recent change in the smell. Moving to the language, we have receptive, which is the vernix area, and also the conductive aphasia. So receptive, we touch you and we give him an order to see if he can understand it. Touch your nose with your right hand and then touch your right ear and see if he can understand this order. And that means he have a vernix area is working. And the second is the conductive aphasia. We're using the, the same sentence that we used in the frontal loop, which is sinus chining, to repeat that uh, sentence. Moving to the last one, which is the short-term memory that we asked him already. We asked him, what's the address I gave you at the beginning of the examination? And if he can remember that, he had a good short-term memory. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the visual field effect. So as we know, in the visual field effect caused by a temporal uh, lesion that should have having a superior contralateral superior quadrinopia, which is also referred as pie in the sky in the hemisphere field. So this is really why this happening is due to a fiction, one of the optic radiations fibers, which is called Meyer loops. It's part of the optic radiation on the, uh, passing through the temporal loop causing the superior right so contralateral superior quadrinopia. Let's put in a, a, a real example. 67 years old with a left temporal lesion. What we expect his visual field effect if he had. The, as we know, we use Humphrey field visual field or Goodman's, but in this case, we're talking about Humphrey field, field test results. We can see the black rods, black area is the area that we have a defect so we can see there is a right so this is the left temporal lesions so we'll have a contralateral would be a right this is the right side in the hemisphere field so right superior homonymous superior quadrinopia right homonymous superior quadrinopia we'll talk about more about the visual field effect and how to read it and how to examine in later video soon. Thank you.